So it was a two fight on Tuesday for USC. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Culkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC your first listen every day. Whether you're watching me on YouTube or wherever you like to download your podcast, we are free. I appreciate your support. Do me a favor, please show your appreciation. Hit that thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube. Also, become a subscriber. It's free. And that way, so you'll never miss an episode Monday through Friday, hit the bell notification button. I've always said, and I'm sure most of you will agree, that two is usually better than one. Two slices of pizza, better than one. A two-point conversion, better than one point. Beating both of your rivals in the same season, that's always better than one, not than not beating one of them, right? So it's even better during the off season when you can beat two of your rivals for two commitments in one day. That's right. USC uh, got a couple of commitments on Tuesday. One of them was being recruited heavily by Notre Dame, as well as Oregon. Young man was smart. He chose USC. So far, USC has uh, thir- heading into the day. USC had um, heading into Tuesday. USC had thirteen players as a as a part of their twenty twenty four recruiting class. Ryan Pelham joined the class on Monday. Talked about him on yesterday's episode. You can go back and check it out. Uh, today, Tuesday, as I'm recording this episode, Marquise Gallegos and Mackay, Mackay Sana, Sana um, both joined the class, and they now have elevated the 2024 class up into the top five realm. We're going to talk about that shortly. First, though, let's talk about defense. The first guy who made a commitment. The defensive back from from the San Fernando Valley, his name is, again, Marquise Gallegos. Uh, Everyone got to see him become a Trojan when he he slipped on his bucket hat during his uh, Instagram announcement. Really cool hat with the SC interlocking logo on it. I love bucket hats. But here's the thing. If you watch or listen to this show every day, which a lot of you do, you already knew that this was going to happen. Because I kind of put the puzzle pieces together um, leading up to Tuesday's announcement, kind of give you an idea what the picture was going to look like. If basically, when you, when you heard, when we all found out that he wasn't taking his official visit to Oregon, kind of sealed the deal. So, what are we getting with uh, Marquise Gallegos? Well, he's a four star. He stands six foot one. He weighs 175 pounds. He plays safety, free safety. And as I mentioned, um, USC was able to get him to choose uh, choose the Trojans over schools such as Oregon, Notre Dame, Michigan, who he'll end up playing against now, as well as a host of other programs. Uh, he said he loves the direction of the of the program, the way it's going right now. He loves that USC is headed to the Big Ten. So again, that makes a difference. It's helping USC with their recruiting. Had USC stayed with the Pac-12, who knows? I'm not saying they wouldn't be getting these guys, but it's making an impact. And he also now gets to stay home and rep the hometown, is what he said. So even though uh, you know schools like Michigan were recruiting him. Now he can play Michigan, and he can do it from the friendly confines of the LA Coliseum. Maybe he'll make it. He'll also be making a trip to. Uh, I actually believe he'll be playing in Ann Arbor, so uh, the Michigan fans will get to see him play just in a different color uniform. And as I mentioned, he plays free safety, and he loves to go get the ball. Uh, in his junior year. He had um, seven interceptions to go along with his 96 tackles, 11 pass deflections. Um, He also scored a touchdown. And if we want to 
give him some bonus points. He also had, of those 96 tackles, four were for a loss. He forced a fumble. He blocked a field goal. And he also had one block punt. So he could be another special teams guy. That's usually the best way for a freshman to see the field. Play on special teams. Make an impact there. Show the coaches what you're capable of doing. If you saw me uh, on the We Are SC Inside the Trojan Huddle show this week, if you haven't, go check it out when you're done making Locked on USC your first listen. I described Marquise Gallegos as a guy who likes to play downhill. Uh, I, I said he has really good read and reaction skills. He takes really good pursuit angles, and he closes that gap quickly. Um, and I called him a thumper. He loves to tackle. He'll lay the hit, but he's a sure tackling type. Really good technique. He wraps up. Um, and he, it's not, it's not that he's always necessarily going for that knockout blow, dis, despite being a big hitter. He's just, uh, technically very sound. And, um, that's something that USC's defense can use right away. So now USC, we can defensive backfield in their recruiting so far, they have Dakota Fields, Marcellus Williams. And we can now add Marquise Gallegos. Now, besides playing defensive back, what else do those three have in common? They, all three, train with premium, uh, team premium, seven on seven. You know who else trains with the premium group? How about modern day defensive back, Xavier Brown? How about the Bosco defensive players, Kingston, Viliamuasa, and Peyton Woodyard? Just saying. Just keep an eye on this. Um, seven on seven programs, teammates. We know Marcellus Williams is going to have an impact on, on how things are playing out. Keep an eye on that dynamic. I'm not saying USC is going to get all of them, but uh, I think that bodes well for them. Just saying, it's another kind of a tea leaf in to kind of look inside your cup and look at go, oh, what does that say? While you're reading the tea leaves, you should probably head on over to FanDuel. Because baseball season is in full swing and there's no better place. If you want to get in on all the action, head on over to FanDuel because they are literally America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers, you're going to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Like you, I'm a Dodger fan. Like you, I have to deal with Dave Roberts being the manager. So if I'm betting on the Dodgers, I'm hoping they win, but I've got a handicap. So, if your first bet doesn't win and you'd like to bet on the Dodgers, you're going to get $1,000 back. Just head on over to FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to join today. So that way you don't get to miss out on a chance to snag a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. So just, just go to FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to sign up for FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. So I need to make sure, I, I want to remind all of my everyday listeners, viewers, and I want to remind everybody to become an everyday viewer or listener, check out tomorrow's episode of Locked on USC because recruiting is going to have another announcement. <clears throat> did I or did I not tell you that Makai Sena was going to become a USC Trojan? Everybody should be nodding up and down just like this. A lot of you probably never heard his name before you heard it on this show. However, uh, all six foot five, 285 pounds of him became USC's 15th commit in the 2024 cycle. Again, it was a two for Tuesday. Marquise Gallegos became commitment number 14. Later on, later in the afternoon, 
Makai became commit number 15. And he is the fourth offensive lineman in this class. He gets to join Manasi Atiti, uh, Jason Zandamella, as well as Hayden Trader. Now, just to kind of refresh everybody's memories. Sena took his official visit to Texas A&M June 2nd. He then was on USC's June Bash weekend, June 16th. And then last weekend, he took a visit down to Austin to visit the Longhorns. Obviously, the June Bash made an impression, made an impression on the freshman to be, <coughs> excuse me, following uh, his, his stay at the Hotel California, AKA Lincoln's Lair. Um, he got to take a cruise on a yacht and then he got to have breakfast at the house that Kobe Bryant built. You call it crypto.com. I call it Staples Center. It will always be the house that Kobe built and where the LA Kings won the national, uh, won the Stanley cup twice. So, um, if here's a quick little anecdote of how Makai ended up becoming a Trojan and he, he has to thank his little brother for this long story short, he came out for an unofficial visit, um, back in the spring when his younger brother was playing in a orchestra concert, his mom said, let's go check out USC. We're going to be in California. Quote, one of the things that sticks out with me and my family is that going to USC, you're going to have one of the top academic, academic degrees. Of course, the goal is to go to the NFL, but even if I don't go, I'll be set up there after with the degree and their network, end quote. So until he checked out USC this past spring, um, Mackay was pretty much set to go to Texas A&M. He, he said, a lot of people say I'm going to be a guard in college. He told this to uh, on threes EJ Holland, who runs the Michigan site. Right now I play tackle. I can play some center too. I don't really mind. I can play anywhere. Uh, the, let me back up a little second so I don't leave that cliffhanger there with the uh, Texas A&M thing. Uh, prior to go, checking out USC, taking a visit, the unofficial, he thought he was going to A&M. That unofficial visit set up the official visit. It sealed the deal. Even, before, even though he went to Texas after that. So there you go. Hopefully that answers everybody's question. Um, what Mackay told WeRSC.com's Marshall Levinson, um, quote, they told me they're going to play me a tackle, but honestly, I think I could play anywhere on the O-line. I'm big enough and I'm long enough to play guard, excuse me, to play tackle, but at the same time, I can play center or guard as well. I've, I've mentioned this before. Um, one of the things that Josh Henson and Lincoln Riley look for uh, when they're recruiting offensive linemen is their versatility, guys who can play multiple positions. So um, they, they look for guys who can play center and then kind of branch it out from there. You know, if they can, if they can play center, that means they can also play guard. But, you know, Mackay also has, the, uh, uh, has those... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? He has the, uh, he's big enough to play tackle. God, I, don't you hate it when you're looking for a certain word and it just slips your mind? Anyways, he's a mauler. Uh, he's got really good feet. And uh, if, again, you've got to love his natural size. Six foot five, 285. And that's before he gets to college and starts using the college training at the USC facilities. Now, USC brought in five high school offensive linemen in their 2023 class. And he is the fourth in their 2024 class. So for the math challenged, that's a total of nine in two years. Should USC go for 10? Get another five person offensive line class? Uh, I mentioned on a recent Locked On USC episode that I wasn't feeling uh, the offensive lineman, the love 
from our Isaac Garcia. He play, he's out of um, out of Utah. That offensive line prospect is um, if USC takes a fifth guy, it's either going to be him, or could it possibly be a, a commitment flip? Somebody who's already committed somewhere else. Stay tuned. Um, like I said, I'm not sure if USC's done. I, I know there's still another couple guys out there that they're interested in. One being Isaac Garcia. Another being someone who else is already committed. I believe his name is uh, Crater. He's committed to Oregon. We'll see what happens there. And let's not forget, like I said, five last year, five freshmen in 2023 on campus. You're going to have four arriving with the 2024 class. Um, don't forget the transfer portals out there if another hole pops open, if USC needs something. So we're going to find out if I have to uh, e-crow soon enough because I also said, and my everydayers will be able to hold this over my head, that Draylon Miller, the wide receiver out of Texas, and his good friend, linebacker Ty Anthony Smith, were going to commit to USC on the 29th and 30th, respectively. Well, the reason I had that high confidence level was because of the comments that both of those guys made and the fact that uh, Draylon Miller did not um, have, well, I did not see his official visit so getting squeezed in be between the time he checked out USC and the dead period starting. Well, he checked out College Station after he left USC. Now, Texas A&M already had very high interest in Ty Anthony Smith. So there's some smoke out there. There's some rumor floating around that Texas A&M might have swooped in with uh, one of their biggie bags. I'm not saying they did, but we know Texas A&M um, was really proud of that uh, greatest recruiting class ever assembled back in 2022. The one that Nick Saban uh, was belly aching about. Him and Jimbo Fisher had a war of words. Some, some say it was the greatest class ever bought. So I guess what recruits who are looking at Texas A&M have to ask themselves is, you know, has Texas A&M seen a return on their investment? I'm not saying it's a done deal that both uh, Draylon Miller and Ty Anthony Smith are going to be Texas A&M Texas a Aggies. I'm not saying that at all. Um, but as I've also told people who listen to the show every day, recruiting is fluid. Things change very quickly, very quickly, fluidly, quickly. Yeah, it's a little late in the day. I apologize. So we're going to know something um, before Thursday, whether uh, Draylon Miller is decides what which hat is he going to choose. We'll find out before then. So. Again, huge Tuesday for USC. Marquise Gallegos, commitment number one. Makai Sana, offensive lineman, commitment number two. USC had two of those going on. So now we just got to figure out, is USC going to get a yes or a no from the Texas duo of Draylon Miller and Ty Anthony Smith? We will find out on Thursday. We might get another commitment on Wednesday. Who knows? Um, I don't think anybody was anticipating Makai to make a commitment on the same day as Gallegos. I kind of hinted about it on the uh, inside the Trojan huddle when I said, who knows, USC might get another commitment during the week that isn't on schedule. There you go. It happened. Sometimes I'll drop hints and you won't even know it. All right. So there you go. Two for Tuesday. I'm not, as of, as of the publishing of this episode of Locked on USC, there are no scheduled announcements for Wednesday. But that doesn't mean something won't happen. Trust me. Every USC fans, it's not supposed to be like this in June. 
and I really hope everybody appreciates the blessing for the opportunity to enjoy and cheer for USC football. Seriously. Uh, I'm going to keep this on a really positive note, but I want to throw this in there to understand why everybody should really appreciate everything that's happening right now. Ryan Mallett played quarterback for the University of Arkansas, got drafted in the NFL by the New England Patriots, and played a few seasons with the Houston Texans. He passed away at the age of 35 on Tuesday. That's how fast and quickly things go by. Um, highly recruited young man, went to Michigan, transferred to Arkansas, had a really solid career. It helped him get drafted by the New England Patriots. We all know he was playing behind Tom Brady there. Ended up um, heading over to the Houston Texans. So rest in peace. And we think of Ryan Mallett with his friends and family um, as, they, as they have to um, deal with that loss. So, <clears throat> again, just appreciate everything you have. And especially to keep it on a positive light, USC recruiting has turned the corner. I mean, right now, today, on Tuesday, June 27th, as I'm recording this episode of Locked on USC, they have the number five rated class in the country. Again, it's not supposed to be happening this fast. Um, but let's, let's enjoy it. Let's take it and run with it. USC is actually rated higher than number five if you like quality over quantity. Recruiting classes with the highest rating per commit. If we look at it from that point of view, it goes Georgia, Ohio State, Florida, Alabama is number four. Those are the top four classes um, in the uh, recruiting rankings, according to ON3. USC comes in at number five. That's with their overall score, with quantity mixed in, with quality, star rankings, the whole algorithm. You guys can figure that out. They, they, they explain how it works. Top five, Georgia, Ohio State, Florida, Alabama, USC. Now, if we look at the quality over quantity, where we're looking at the, uh, the star ratings, Alabama actually has the number one rated class. Their average player ranking, 93.01. They only have eight commitments. I told you, they're going to close really strong. They always do. Coming in at number two is Ohio State. They, their average um, recruit ranking is 92, even. They have 16 commitments. In that grouping, you've got a couple of five-star wide receivers, Jeremiah Smith, Mylon Graham. And they've got a, uh, they get the, a top 50 quarterback prospect, Air Nolan. It's a pretty cool name for quarterback, by the way. <laughs> Number three is Georgia. Their average score per recruit is 91.52. They've got 21 commitments. So that's why they have the number one overall class when you factor in everything together. And, you know, they are the back-to-back -back national champions. So they're going to get a little bit of a uh, cred credibility bump. And then checking in at number four, here come your USC Trojans. Average rating per commit, 91.05. Not that far behind Georgia. USC has 13 commits. Georgia has 21. Look, USC is just going to continue to climb up that, that ratings ladder uh, with every time they add a commitment. So that overall class ranking is going to keep rising. I don't know if they're, if if the star ranking will continue to rise with it, but um, USC is recruiting at a very high level is what I'm trying to point out. Uh, USC has, you know, they brought in top 100 defensive backs, Marcellus Williams and Dakota Fields, both of them top 100. Um, Xavier Jordan, wide receiver. Ryan Pelham, again, two highly, highly, highly rated guys and then USC just added in Marquise Gallegos 
as well as Makai Sana. Behind them, Florida is number five. Number six is Clemson. Number seven, Auburn. Number eight, Notre Dame. Their average uh, ranking per recruit, 89.97. They have 21 commitments. Michigan, their average ranking per recruit, 89.93. I'm showing you the difference between what USC's quality and these other schools who were ranked ahead of them. And then coming in at number 10, Texas A&M, 89.83. So I didn't notice the name Oregon in there. I had to throw that dig in. There you go. USC, their 2024 recruiting class, they are recruiting at a very high level. I gave you the top three scores in quality versus quantity. USC's number four. This is why the discussion has starting to turn from USC's, they're gonna have a top five ranked recruiting class when everything's all said and done. The bar is now, can they get into that top three? Um, Yes, the answer is yes, they can. All right, that's it for this episode of Locked on USC. A lot of information to get in there. I'll have more coming up on our next episode tomorrow because we come at you five days a week. That's why you need to watch Locked on USC every single day. And when you're not making Locked on USC your first listen, well, when you're done making Locked on USC your first listen, you're going to head on over to wrc.com when you're done so you can kind of fill in the blanks with everything I can't squeeze in in 30 minutes or less. So until then, everyone, you know what to do.